Discovering that you're deficient in potassium really just comes down to knowing what it feels like and what it looks like. So we're gonna give you the breakdown of what a potassium deficiency looks like, particularly on a low carb protocol, and then I'll give you some solutions to be able to kind of rectify that a little bit. So let's go ahead and dive in. Potassium is like a slingshot within your nervous system. Okay, so when you send what is called an action potential, when you send like the potential to move from your brain to any part of your body, okay, it is a relationship between sodium and potassium that allows this to happen. Okay, sodium enters into a cell and then what happens is the potassium pulls it back out and kind of releases it again. That's the simplest way to explain it. It's like a slingshot. Without potassium, sodium doesn't ever get really reset. Okay, so what happens is things can remain in a locked position whereas potassium allows them to unlock a little bit. So cramping, all that kind of general stuff. Before I get into the symptoms, so to speak, there's one really quick way that you can test, and that's literally by like when you're feeling a certain way, when you're feeling fatigued, or when you're feeling stiff, or when you're feeling like crampy, if you consume some electrolytes, you should feel it within about 30 seconds, getting a pretty big mental lift, okay? The reason that I say this is not to be generic, but it's because remember where most of the nerve activity is happening within our body, in our brain, right? So if you're feeling a little bit like kind of down and maybe just tired and just general melees, like you're gonna feel electrolytes playing a role within your brain almost immediately. So it just allows you, like say your legs are cramping a little bit, but you also feel a little bit run down. If you had electrolytes, you're not going to feel your leg not cramp instantaneously. That's going to take some time, but you will feel it within your brain relatively quick. So I just kind of say you can always test it that way and give yourself a little bit of an indicator. And you can do that with straight potassium. You can do it with pure salt, whatever. Okay, let's get into this stuff though. The first indicator, especially on a lower carb protocol, is if you are deficient in potassium, you start getting really sensitive to salt. Okay, remember salt and potassium work together. Okay, so they also kind of oppose each other. So if you are deficient in potassium, what's happening is you don't have enough to counterbalance sodium. So all of a sudden you start getting more sensitive to sodium. You get edema, you end up with some facial bloating, you feel just kind of foggy because that's exactly what's happening. Like you have this overstimulation from sodium without the actual reset of the potassium. So pretty interesting that you would actually feel it in that way. So you might notice like, hey, I'm doing keto, but every time I eat even a little bit of salt, I feel like I get super puffy. Well, you could add some potassium into the mix. And there's certain reasons why some people deplete their potassium stores more than sodium stores, but it's a pretty complex situation. The next one I wanna talk about is one that is very common on keto, and that is sort of a chronic muscle stiffness. Okay, so we have two things that are happening here. For one, the blood vessels will stay somewhat contracted. Okay, they're staying like in their tense form because potassium isn't there to sort of allow the release a little bit. So you end up with very like constricted vessels, which means limited blood flow to a specific muscle cell. Okay, well what that can do is that causes the muscle cell to potentially rupture a little bit and leak because it's starved of oxygen. Now in extreme cases, like you've probably heard of something called rhabdomyolysis before, which is like where people work out so hard that their muscles break down to the point and it leaks basically components of itself into the bloodstream so much that the, the kidneys can't tolerate. I'm not talking about that extreme, I'm talking about it having at a small scale where the muscle cells are kind of rupturing and they're just getting really stiff. This is a pretty common issue and it has to do again with potassium but also just the overall dehydration effect. Okay. But then there's another piece that's a little less scary and what that is is when we consume electrolytes like salt and potassium, okay, it triggers this gradient that travels down you know, our nerve, the action potential travels down a nerve to trigger a muscle to move. But before it triggers the muscle to move, it goes through what's called a calcium channel. And after this calcium channel, the process starts over again where sodium and potassium are needed. If we're mildly deficient in potassium, we don't have enough potassium to trigger that second effect of the actual muscle contracting properly and, and relaxing properly. So the general rule of thumb is, if you are cramping or getting stiff during a workout, it is more than likely a potassium issue. If you are cramping or getting stiff uh, hours after a workout, it ends up being a magnesium issue, which is kind of a story for a different day. By the way, I'm gonna continue on with this and give you some additional kind of like things that you can consume, but my recommended electrolytes, I put them down below because people always ask me. It's called Element, L-M-N-T. 
My personal favorite flavor is the mango chili. That flavor is amazing. But anyway, they have a whole bunch of different flavors. You can try eight sample packs of Element. You just pay a couple bucks for shipping. So this is a special promotion just for people that watch my channel. And because Element is a big supporter of this channel, they extend some of the savings out to you. So literally you just pay for shipping. So there's a link down below. You go to drink L-M-N-T, drink element, drink lmnt.com slash Thomas. Okay, or just use that link down below. That way you just pay shipping and get a sample pack to try them for yourselves. The other symptom that rears its ugly head when you're deficient in potassium is actually a little bit of numbness. This has to do with purely the neurological piece. Okay, we feel the whole sodium potassium imbalancing a lot in our nerves. We're just not always in touch with it. So like a numbness or tingling, specifically when you are dehydrated, right? So when you are feeling like first thing in the morning, you're a little bit numb or tingly, that's usually a good indicator. And the first thing that people do is they usually eat drink some water when they get up. Well, that's great, except that's diluting your electrolytes even more. And I'm all for water, but in that case, you may wanna add a little bit of electrolytes or even just some sodium to your water because sodium is going to help you out in the large grand scheme of things because sodium is gonna allow you to retain water sounds bad, but it's gonna allow you to retain water, which therefore allows you to retain the other minerals too. So sodium is kind of the, the root of all of this and allows us to retain the other minerals, which is so important on keto. Then we have the mental fatigue and the mood swing aspect, which isn't heavily documented, but it's a lot more evident with people on keto simply because the undulations and dehydration and electrolyte imbalances can be so extreme just because insulin levels are low and we're excreting a lot. And it comes down to a lot of times what's called network stability. Okay, if you look at fMRI scans of the brain, a lot of times uh, when we're adjusting to keto and things like that, we can have a reduction in what is called brain energy. It's literally the amount of energy that is floating through the brain between different regions of the brain. And one of the best ways to potentially combat this is a, get deeper into ketosis because more ketones are going to actually provide your brain with more fuel, but that's easier said than done. You can't just magically do that if you're a beginner, right? Uh, one of the other things is there is an interesting study that demonstrated that MCT oil might, this is a hypothesis, might change brain energetics independent of ketone production. What that means is having some electrolytes and having some MCT oil might just give your brain a little bit of that quote unquote network stability and brain energy that it needs to possibly change those kind of shifting ways that you feel. Now, one that kind of coincides with all these two is insomnia, okay? We forget that any kind of electrolyte imbalance, particularly magnesium and potassium, can have a huge effect on your sleep, okay? Remember, anytime an alarm kind of goes off in your body, electrolytes being low, whatever, it's going to cause you to wake up. It's an alarm system for your body and it's happening at kind of a micro level. So that's something to think about too. Like a lot of times people think insomnia and they start like trying to piecemeal things together and the reality is sometimes it's as simple as having a little bit of salt before bed. Not to mention a little bit of salt or a little bit of potassium or kind of just getting those electrolytes before bed in the first place. That can also help you retain water a tiny bit more so you don't just necessarily urinate a bunch in the middle of the night and have to get up and pee twice, right? That's my problem, it wakes me up all the time. And just to kind of give you a few foods that you can eat when you're on keto, I know it's not the purpose of this video, but I wanna give you something pragmatic. Of course, using electrolyte powders are great, like I suggested the element down below, which is just a fun and good tasting way. But then avocados, okay, Brussels sprouts, which are one of my personal favorites. Beet greens have like 25 to 30% of your daily value in just a serving, so like the greens from a beet. Then we have coconut water, but you don't wanna do a lot of it. You wanna make sure it doesn't have sugar added to it. Coconut water is a nice balanced electrolyte drink. It's just, again, a lot of sugar if you drink one that you're not paying attention to. Uh, clams are an interesting one. So clams, mussels, things like that, if you mix those up into like a dish or you just add them, those are a tremendous, tremendous source of potassium. And anytime you can get it in a bioavailable fashion like that, I highly recommend it. And then one of the seeds that people really like to consume that I'm a big fan of is pumpkin seeds, and you don't need much of it. Also very rich in zinc, okay, which has some, of course, benefits as well. But we'll just kind of lean into those in the different videos. So of course, you can really combine all these things. Avocados are probably my personal favorite when it comes down to just being able to have just versatility. But at the end of the day, you have to see when you need them because it's a water-soluble mineral and it's gonna have an effect pretty quick. So eating three avocados yesterday doesn't necessarily constitute established potassium levels today. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Thank you again, Element, for the support. Don't forget to check them out down below and I'll see you tomorrow.